This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Good morning, church. Welcome. Welcome to Stone Temple United Methodist Church. I am Yi Zhong Han, the pastor here. I'm so glad we have the maiden this morning with us. So I'm so glad to have you this morning. And today is the sixth Sunday of Easter. During the worship, you may feel the presence of God and the Holy Spirit may awake your heart and mind so that you may worship God in the spirit and in truth. Today is the, today is the Mother's Day, so I prepared a video clip that is uh, kind of related to the Mother's Day. So let us prepare our mind and souls for the worship today. This spring, only one hero can save her family.
To those who lost a child this year, we mourn with you. To those who are in the trenches with little ones every day and wear the badges of food stains, we appreciate you. We appreciate you. To those of you that walk the hard path of infertility, fraught with hope, pride, tears, and disappointment, we walk with you. Forgive us when we say foolish things. We don't need to make this harder than it is. To those who have experienced loss through a miscarriage, through a failed adoption, or through running away. We mourn with you. To those who are foster mom, mentor mom, and spiritual mom, we need you. To all the moms who have warm and close relationships with your children, we celebrate with you. We celebrate with you. We celebrate with you. To those who experienced abuse at the hands of your own mother, we acknowledge your experience. For those of you who've lost your mother, we grieve with you. To those who have disappointment, heartache, and distance with your children, we sit with you. We sit with you. We sit with you. To those who lived through driving tests, medical tests, and the overall testing of motherhood, we are better for having you in our midst. To those who will have emptier nests in the upcoming year, we grieve and rejoice with you. To those who have aborted children, we remember them and you this day. To those of you who are single and long to be married and mothering your own children, we mourn that life has not turned out the way you long for it to be. To those who are step parents, we walk with you on these complex paths. To those of you who envision loving our grandchildren, yet whose dream is not to be, we grieve with you. And to those who are pregnant with new life, expected and surprising, we anticipate with you. This Mother's Day, we walk with you. We remember you. We remember you. We remember you. And we remember you. Today and every day, we remember you.
our scripture reading this morning, the first scripture reading this morning is from Genesis. And God said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it, and it was so. And the second reading is from John, chapter 4, verses 7 to 26. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? The disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water well enough to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming back here to draw water. He told her, Go, call your husband and come back. I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is, you have had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming, and has now come, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah, called Christ, is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. The word of God for the people of God. Please stand for the response. Jesus had been teaching in Judea. He and his disciples began traveling back to Galilee. They traveled through Samaria and stopped in the town of a well. Jesus' disciples went into town to buy food. While Jesus was at the well, a Samaritan woman came to get water from the well. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. The woman was surprised. Why are you talking to me? She asked. 
You are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. Jesus said, I asked you for a drink. You don't know who I am. If you did, you would have asked me for a drink, and I would give you living water. The woman was confused. She said, Sir, this well is deep, and you don't have a bucket. Where do you get this living water? Jesus said, Anyone who drinks this well water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks from the water I give will never be thirsty again. In fact, the water I give will become a well inside you, and you will have eternal life. Jesus was talking about the Holy Spirit, but the woman did not understand. Sir, she said, give me this water. If I'm not thirsty, I won't have to keep coming to this well to get water. Go get your husband, Jesus said. I don't have a husband, the woman replied. Jesus knew she was telling the truth. He said, you don't have a husband now, but you've had five husbands. Jesus was right. I see you are a prophet, the woman said. Maybe this prophet could explain something to her, she said. The Samaritans worship here on the mountain, but the Jews say we need to worship the temple in Jerusalem. Jesus said, Soon you will not need to be in either of those places to worship God in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know the Messiah is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus said, I am the Messiah. The woman left and told the people in her town, Come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? Many Samaritans believed in Jesus because of what the woman said. Jesus stayed in their town for two days. Many more believed because of what Jesus said. They told the woman, We no longer believe because of what you said, for we have heard for ourselves and know that this really is the Savior of the world. Jesus offers something better than physical water. He gives us himself. Jesus gives the Holy Spirit to everyone who comes to him by faith. We can worship him as Lord and Savior wherever we are. Let us pray. Loving God, we are here to listen to your message. Please use me as a means of delivering your holy word. In your holy name I pray. Amen. If you have heard the word water, what images come up in your mind? Or if you have picture water in your mind, which word comes up in your mind? Any word? The cleansing, life, quenching thirsty, 
And let me ask a question. In other words, when do you use water? Drinking, right? And planting, and showering, and washing, and so on, right? In the Bible, there are over 500 references to various forms of water. From the very beginning, the Bible emphasizes the significance of water in understanding of God and our relationship with God and the earth. In the very beginning, in the Bible, the story of God's creation, God said, let there be a space between the waters to separate the waters of the heaven from the water of the earth. And that is what happened. God made this space to separate the waters of the earth from the water of the heaven. God separated the water and created the earth from it. The creation literally comes out of water. Without water, life does not exist. Even though Jesus is the Son of God, he was baptized with water by John the Baptist. The water in the baptism is a symbol of birth, life, death, and cleansing, growth. From the water of baptism to water in the womb of an expectant mother, as we are born from the womb, the, from the womb, so in baptism, we are born into the Christian life. The water of baptism also connects us with Christ's death and resurrection. Immersion in water is a symbol of a burial that destroys and sins and gives us new life in Christ. Also, the water of baptism symbolizes the cleansing of sin and the purification of our souls. The water traditionally symbolizes the nourishment and growth. As a rainless water that fills to bear crops, the water of baptism begins a life process of growth towards God. Jesus mentioned the living water in the Gospel of John. Jesus encountered the Samaritan woman at the town well. He asked her water, and he talked about talked with her about living water. Understanding the symbol of spirituality of water begins with an understanding of the physical necessity of water. Our body is a two-third of the water, as you know. We need water for drinking, cooking, washing, planting, and so on. Water is essential to all life. It is for all life, not just for human beings. According to BBC News on April 13, Japan has approved a plan to release more than 1 million tons of contaminated water from the destroyed Fukushima nuclear plant into the sea. If they dumped out of the contaminated water into the ocean, it would be impact to our ocean, our food, in the ocean, and it would impact the whole world. As we have experienced with COVID-19, we are all connected globally. No matter how high the COVID-19 vaccination rate in the United States is, the United States will never be safe from COVID-19 if the virus continues to expand in other countries because other countries do not have the vaccine. 
Do you remember in February and early March last year, we never ever imagined that the COVID-19 would come to the U.S. or that would threaten our lives. We thought that it happened only in China or in South Korea or in Asia. So we prayed for them. But on March 13, 2020, we closed the school, the shopping malls, the church, and the workplaces, and so on, except the essential business. Through the COVID-19, we have learned we are all connected globally. If one country is shut down because of the virus, it would be impact all countries economically, economically, politically, in public health. Go back to the account of Jesus and Samaritan woman at the well. Jesus met the Samaritan woman at the well. It was a long and tiring day to walk through Samaria. Jesus sat down by the well while his disciples went to buy food in the village. This was where Jesus and Samaritan woman met. She came to draw water. Jesus asked her, Will you give me a drink? Jesus was physically thirsty, so that he asked her for a drink of water. She was really surprised at his action because at that time, Jewish people did not talk with Samaritan and a woman in public. Jesus' action was to cross significant social boundaries of religion, ethnicity, and gender. Even though Jesus asked her for a drink, he told her about living water that he could give, her, give to her. She was confused by what Jesus was talking about. Jesus said, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. She told Jesus she wanted to have that living water so that she would not get thirsty again and have to keep coming there to draw water. Then, Jesus asked her, bring her husband to see him. She said that she did not have a husband. Jesus told her that she had a five husband, but now she did not have any because she lived with a man who did not marry her. In this conversation, she exposed her life story about her husband. Even though the conversation with Jesus opened her past, she did not appear to be shamed. Instead, her conversation with Jesus made her bold enough to go and tell all her friends and neighbors about Jesus. She said of Jesus to her friends and neighbors, Come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. I believe that she could do this because she felt Jesus' compassion and love. The scripture did not say how she felt, and yet I believe she might have felt and said, Come and see a man who taught me everything I ever did and loved me anyway. Everything she ever did is a long list of sins and common knowledge besides 
It was always before her in the judgmental expressions of her neighbors through the conversation with Jesus, even though Jesus knew her past, she felt that he still loved her and forgave her. There was an unbelievable news as fresh as anything she had ever had. The man who told her everything she ever did and loved her anyway. This is what saved her life. At first, Jesus asked her for a drink because she was physically thirsty. And yet, Jesus noticed her spiritual thirst so that he could, he could tell her about living water. That is a salvation and eternal life that he could give her. He came to her as an asker, but then he became a giver to her. During the conversation with Jesus, she became an asker. After the conversation with Jesus, she became a giver because she had a taste the living water, that which meant that she would never be spiritually thirsty again. She could not hold the express experience of the living water inside of her so that she ran to her friends and her neighbors to share what she got. The spiritual water burst into her life from Jesus and this spiritual water flew into her friends and her neighbors. Let me have a question. In which part of your life are you thirsty? Are you looking for the living water? As the story reveals, we discover the amazing thing is that Jesus already know our secrets. Jesus pressed her with respect as a human being in spite of knowing her story. God already knows the, spirit, the secrets we are hiding. God is seeking us and calling us. God has, God has work for us to do, and God already knows the secrets we are using as a reason for holding back. Too many people of God's people are holding back, trying to stay invisible because we think we have a secret that will disqualify us from the work of God's kingdom. God let the secret keeps us from the challenges of being a part of mighty work of the kingdom of God. Well, rejoice, God knows the secrets with which we live. God has a forgiveness and grace available to bring those secrets to the light. And in that light of his love and mercy, the secrets lose power over us, and we are free to use ourselves in the great joy and mission of God's people. This time, Let's take a moment by closing your eyes and in silence and think about which secrets you think you're hiding from God and which part of your life are really thirsty. And let us silently confess them before God. And then God will bring the secrets to light and the secrets will lose their power over us and we are free from them and have a great joy as a people of God. Amen.
Our offering plates continue to be in the back of the church um, for you to provide that when you feel so inclined. Our second offering for the month of May is the Helping Up Mission, which um, supports folks who are dealing with alcohol and drug addiction. We are going to have um, Loaves and Fishes is the 29th. On the evening of the 28th, as usual, the Friday before, we'll be here at 6 to pack lunches. And at that same time, we're going to be cleaning up the kitchen and the area back there. Um, so please join us to do that. Try to put it all together in one night. Um, did you notice that how nice it looks out there with all those weeds gone? So um, many hands make light work, so please come join us to do that. And then uh, SWAT, before that actually, SWAT is on the 20th at 6, and immediately following that is our church council meeting. So that's what's happening in May. Are there other announcements? Yes.
for God and drink deeply of water of salvation and quench your thirst for truth. For the Lord is with you. Bring God's peace and bring the good news to all whom you meet in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 